Certainly top of the league last weekend. Attention's now turned to second in the league. Uh, what sort of challenge awaits us on Saturday? A real difficult one. Um, they're clearly going well. Um, I think they're dangerous from all over the pitch. Um, and like I said, it's, it's one of those where I think when you're going as well as they are, they want to keep up momentum. They want to keep the run going. Um, but for us, it's, we've got to be confident at home. Um, off the back of a couple of good results and obviously playing top of the league at the weekend and able to come away with something from that, we've got to try and take that into the, this weekend's game and obviously different threats and they'll, they'll give us different, ch different challenges but um, uh, ones that we need to, need to be prepared for and, and, tr and try and get um, everybody on side. I mean, I, I, I'd love the, the, the fans to be right behind us with that because um, I know we've said this, but going forward, we got, I think, five of the top eight at home in the running. And um, if we're going to be doing anything in the running or trying to challenge to make these playoffs, uh, we're going to need the fans with us. So um, hopefully that will start sadly. And how hard is it to prepare for a side like Carlisle? Because as you say, they, they mount a lot of attacks from all over the pitch. Um, they've got a, a proven goal scorer in their side as well. Um, how do you prepare your side for that? Well, for starters, we need to kind of build on what we've been doing better of late ourselves. Um, but yeah, it's making them aware, aware of the, um, the individual threats. Um, obviously, collectively, knowing that it's a team that are clearly high on confidence and... Um, causing teams a lot of problems but um, then trying to kind of analyse that and see where we can maybe um, cause them problems and like I said it's, we don't really want to be playing at home regardless of whether they're top, second, second from bottom or whatever we want to be playing at home and trying to play our game to as much as um, a, pos a possibility as, as we can because obviously ideally if we get what we want to be doing right then we'll give ourselves the best opportunity of getting a result and um, like I said as, as, much, as much as looking at what threats they have and how they can cause us problems we'll be analysing it from an aspect of what we can do to hurt them. Injuries don't seem to be getting any better at the moment and obviously news this week with Edward Ellis and, and Reese out for a few months now. Um, I guess you feel for Reese after such a, a really positive first half from him and obviously Ellis out for pretty much the remainder of the season. How have you dealt with that as a manager and, and how are the two coping with that? Well, first and foremost, from a, a kind of human aspect and, a, and a, the personal side, I, instantly when I found out about L, because obviously we, we was waiting a little bit with Ellis because he just felt he had a problem with his heel and then got awful news. You, you, you end up being guided for him. and Obviously, you want to make sure that the players are kind of okay first and foremost because I know we've said it before but injuries is the worst thing and then obviously with Reese, even though he was devastated at the ground at Leighton Orient to obviously get the news of kind of how serious it is it's, uh, it's obviously a tough one to take so then you just want to make sure that they're right and send them the messages that you hope kind of lets them know that the, the staff and, and everybody in and around the club is thinking of them because it's it's a real tough place to be when you're when you're injured and you can't do what you love. Um, so yeah, listen, that's the first thing that crosses your mind, and then obviously having to pick up the pieces of where that leaves you um, for, as a squad and as in preparation for games is um, then you got to try and shuffle the pack and see um, what kind of movements you need to make to give yourself the best chance to try and get a result um, in the next coming games and. That's only something. I'm not being funny. It's we've had, we've had to put up with these setbacks weekly at the moment. So um, it's nothing new as far as um, us having to kind of get over these obstacles. But at the same time, it's it's definitely something new when you're the one on the end of it. So I think first and foremost, you want to check that the lads are all right as well. Uh, in other news, in more positive news, Tom Brewitt's come in to to strengthen that back line. How pleased are you to get that deal over the line? And and what will he bring to the side? Yeah, well, he he. I kind of one of the good things about Tom is that he can maybe cover numerous positions, and I think when you're at the stage of see, stage of the season we're at, and where we're at regarding injuries and suspensions, I think that has to come into play when you're looking at um, trying to add to the squad and 
um, strengthen and try and make sure that you're kind of covered in all areas. When you get the other side of the transfer windows and you're talking about free agents, I mean, that's one of the things that has to pop into your head, obviously, amongst the, the other aspects that you need to look at when signing players. So, listen, he's, he's played some games in his career. He's not, not one of the ones he's got hundreds under his belt, but he's also not a, he's not a 20 year old who hasn't never played the game. So um, he's got a good education as far as in coming through at Liverpool. I know a couple of coaches that have worked with him and um, I think he's one that is a bit of a leader as well. Um, I think he wants to do things the right way and train properly. And I think when the going gets tough, um, I think he'll be one that would like to be at the front of the front of the queue. And I think if you're going to have a a tough run in and um, tough moments and having to rely on players maybe playing that position or like I said, there's there's a young group. Then I think you need as many leaders as possible. And um, I think even just a small small amount of time that Tom's been in, uh, he's certainly one that's not shy of, of speaking and stuff. And I think that's. I think that's important amongst the group. And after a positive defensive display against a really good Leighton Orient side, uh, has that been a focus of, of training this week? You've had a few more bodies maybe to prepare for, for Carlisle um, and really push on. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, the, the kind of week was planned to be a bit of a tapering down week because of the upturn in kind of how I'd like to train compared to um, how they've prepared for the rest of the season and um, the fact that we were then kind of short on bodies and there's quite a few quite a few of the players that have maybe got slight issues and um, the medical department has got, um, let's say, some worries about. Um, it's actually been a week that we've kind of tapered down a little bit um, just from the physical aspect. So, um, yeah, listen, going forward off the back of a... Uh, like you say, a good defensive display at Leighton Orient is is all well and good, but then obviously it's time to start again and now prep for a, a different team and one at home. Um, it's like like you say, we can take confidence from from Leighton Orient and definitely take take away the support we had as well from the, those away fans. They were outstanding, and the players have spoken about it. The staff had spoken about it, saying we actually could hear him at one nil down, um, and if we can kind of replicate that at home and get something that kind of resembles how they were on Saturday, that would be great because it's going to be needed, especially when, like I said, we're, we've got enough challenges as it is. Um, so it'd be real, real good to have a, a bouncing county ground with, with home fans that are fully, fully behind the, the players that are on the pitch. And is complacency something that you've potentially mentioned this week? Obviously, this, your side have gone to Leighton Orient, got a really good result against top of the league. A similar sort of challenge this Saturday as well. Is complacency something that you've sort of said, look, look lads, we need to stay focused, work hard again, and we'll get another result on Saturday? No, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't addressed complacency at all because for me, it's there's still one point. It's still a draw away from home. It's, we haven't gone to Leighton Orient and won 4 5 nil, and then I think that we need to kind of get the head shrinking machine out before they're walking through doors because it's okay we went and got a point it was a good one and a lot of the circumstances that um, were involved in the build up to the game I think added to the the kind of pleasing nature that everyone felt after because they knew it was it was kind of chucked together at last minute and people had to play that hadn't played much and um, we had to deal with more setbacks during the game um, I think that was kind of one of the things that I liked about it but at the same time as I said it was a point and um, we've dropped enough points previous to these games so it's only right that we kind of try and see where we can maybe nick those um, unsuspecting points back which obviously the one at the weekend that we managed to get was maybe one that on paper people wouldn't have thought that we could get but I'd, I'd like to keep that trend going and if people want to look at the two teams on paper and say we're playing against second in the league who are flying then um, yeah, I'd like to maybe upset that one as well. And just finally um, 
three game unbeaten run. Obviously, we've got the result against the top of the league as well. Um, how encouraging is it that you're, you're suddenly getting results given the setbacks with injuries um, with regards to um, you're not the finished article yet? You've, you've said yourself there's still you know, a, a better performances we can put in. How encouraging is it that you're getting results at the moment but your side aren't quite where you want them to be? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always better. It's, it's certainly better um, debriefing after games when you've had positive results, even though you want to maybe deliver some negative um, responses to certain aspects of the game. But um, I also feel, like I said, I think we've been on the wrong end of some results that kind of, or decisions that kind of haven't, haven't gone our way. So, um, listen, I, I, I think we need to treat every game as it comes. And um, I don't think there'll be complacency amongst the group at all. Um, whether we was playing second in the league or someone further down the bottom, I, I just think um, it's always good to build momentum. Um, but when you're talking about momentum and confidence, um, I suppose we need to be um, happy with what's gone on the last sort of couple of games. But at the same time, knowing that we're going up against a team that is certainly further ahead as far as confidence and momentum is concerned. So um, it's, it's going to be a huge challenge and. We're going to need people that perform well on Saturday to reproduce that and maybe have um, some more players that, that maybe wasn't wasn't quite at the races on Saturday as well that come into the forefront and hopefully can dovetail nicely with um, the rest of the ones that I'm sure, we, listen, I'd love it if I could stand here and say that all players that are involved in the game, who all those who come off the bench can have the same sort of impact that people like Wakey had at the weekend. but. Um, it's we'll wait and see what happens, but at the same time, the the more players that we get that are kind of at that level, the better chance we got. And at the moment, um, who knows what will happen? But as I said, the, the prep's been okay. All the best on Saturday. Cheers, mate.